Okay, uh, to get us jump started, I'd like to recognize a few of our guests here. We have Lincoln Mayor Chris Beitler. He's a leader in, in the environment and a proposal for renewable energy. His vision and leadership has led the city to investigate the potential use of landfill gas for generating electricity. We have LES Administrator and CEO Kevin Wales. Uh, we have from our LES board, uh, Marilyn McNabb, Chair. Uh, we have W. Don Nelson. We have Sarah Peets. And did Vicki sneak in this morning? Vicki Huff? Okay. All right. Uh, from the uh, City Council, we have Chair Carl Eskridge. Thank you for coming. Uh, from the Nebraska Energy Office, we have the Director, Ginger Wilson. Hi, Ginger. And then from the Power Review Board, Tim Texel. Tim, are you here? Doesn't look like it. Uh, representing the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Kyle Fisher. Hey, Kyle. Great. You know, as project manager, I was fortunate to work with a great number of uh, people on this project. Uh, from the city, the Solid Waste Operations Group, uh, the superintendent, uh, Carl Welding, and on her staff, the engineering specialist, uh, Ryan Boyer, been fantastic folks uh, to work with on this project. Uh, at LES, we've had a great number of people put in time and effort on this project. Uh, Jim Dutton and Tyson Chambers, uh, plant staff and managers. Uh, we have Scott Kaler in our in engineering group, and uh, of course, Tom Davlin, our manager, who's been working on the development of this project for quite some time. So we thank everyone for their dedication and hard work. Uh, the landfill gas to energy facility is a 4,800 kilowatt uh, plant. Uh, it's our newest uh, in renewable energy resource. It works kind of well in this area. Just to our southwest, we have LES's first uh, renewable resources. Uh, the two wind turbines, which happen to be the oldest operable wind generators in the state. The other noteworthy thing about this project is it's the second time that LES and the uh, Public Works Department have come to together to work at Terry Bundy Generating Station. Uh, Terry Bundy uses the effluent water from the Northeast Wastewater Treatment Plant. Without that water, we would not be able to have a uh, power plant or a renewable energy facility such as this one. So thanks to the city for their hard work on those efforts as well. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Mayor Chris Beitler. Well, good morning, everybody. You feeling pretty good? I hope you are. You should be. All you who worked on this from the city side and the LES side especially, uh, there's so many great things happening in our city now. It's, I'm delighted to be out here to celebrate with you uh, this great thing that has been done. Uh, I want to, uh, to say that uh, I think this is a, a great step forward in the whole area of providing affordable renewable energy for homes and businesses through, throughout the city. Uh, it's a highly noteworthy moment in the uh, city's long and distinguished history of providing affordable and secure and publicly owned electrical power. Together, we're taking a major step forward in providing renewable energy that will benefit residents for decades to come through a cleaner environment, through a local source of energy, uh, by continued low uh, utility rates, and the unlocking of new economic development possibilities. I remember standing at the Bluffs Road landfill on a cold November day back in uh, 2010. We were announcing the launch of the city's voluntary effort to capture the methane gas naturally produced by the tons of organic waste deposited uh, there every day. I said then that this was not only an example of cleaning up our environment without waiting for any federal or state mandate, but of our seizing the opportunity to make this resource available sooner to create 
clean, renewable energy and to bolster our local economy. One year later, the Lincoln Electric System uh, was making it happen, stepped forward and committed to, uh, uh, to making everything possible as part of its effort to expand its portfolio of renewable resources. LES recognized that turning the city's landfill gas into electricity could be a significant part of meeting its customers' future needs and the growing desire uh, for more renewable energy and its power mix. Today we are here seeing this commitment in full action. Each one of us as the customer owners of LES can take great pride in seeing these investments in renewable energy literally come to life. It's inspiring to know that the landfill's natural byproduct is being captured and burned to create enough energy to power over 2,500 households. This means thousands of Lincoln citizens will be waking up in the morning and drinking their coffee and running their air conditioners and asking their kids to turn off the lights, <laughs> putting garbage out on the curb, going about their normal lives, and all day long, the electricity they use will be coming not from a distant coal plant or wind turbine, but from right here along Bluff Road. No longer are these households subject to the whims of any particular foreign government or to any new costly regulations, such as those affecting the market for coal. Instead, they are the beneficiaries of local renewable energy produced in a way that also greatly reduces the carbon emitted into our otherwise very clean air. They may not think about it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I am confident that Lincoln residents understand the long-term value of this kind of investment. Lincoln is becoming known more and more for its high quality of life and its related commitment to sustainability evidenced by this project, of course, as well as by the even newer Innovation Campus Cent Central Renewable Energy System, which we announced last week. These initiatives truly are making a difference in our ability to attract research and technology, and research and technology-led businesses and industries that in turn bring high quality jobs and increased investment across the city. I've been pleased over the last few years to, to see the leadership and the vigilance and the creativity that public servants have been exercising regularly at both the City of Lincoln's Public Works Department, especially those working within the Solid Waste Program, and at LES. Their hard work, their hard work, has gotten us all to today's dedication. And I want to thank all of them for their joint efforts on this particular project. So with that, I'm gonna stop and turn it over to the guy who's really getting things done for us. Uh, Kevin Wales, of course, is the CEO of LES uh, and has become a good friend of mine. We've had so many good candid, positive conversations over the last couple of years. And Kevin, I've appreciated that very much. I've appreciated your leadership generally and your leadership on sustainability uh, programs. Uh, and I'm delighted to be joining you today to celebrate this little victory. Thank you, Mayor. It, you know, any project like this uh, has so many people participating that it's always, you don't really want to leave anybody out and thanking them. Um, and the mayor did a great job of really covering most of the issues associated with the project. But I would like to thank the mayor, certainly the city of Lincoln, the public works staff for all that they did to help this work and, and in fact being a, a strong promoter before we ever got it off the ground. Uh, and certainly for LES, the power supply division, the project engineering uh, department itself, Dan, certainly the work he's done, the Terry Bundy generating staff, all the things they've done. There are so many people, you don't want to leave anybody out, but certainly it's, it's been an effort that not only exemplifies the great working relationship between LES and the city, 
uh, but certainly what a lot of people have an interest in making us go forward and be as good as we can be with respect to efficiency and the environment as well. Um, certainly we also ought to thank the contractors that, that participated in this uh, from Hawkins Construction, uh, Nebraska Machinery, uh, HDR. This project came in a million dollars under budget and all of us know how important that is, not only as it relates to the ultimate value to our customers, but certainly as, as public entities we want to make sure that we're demonstrating a lot of fiscal responsibility in what we do. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about what this meant to our renewable portfolio. Um, with the addition of these units, uh, we will be at roughly a 12% of our retail energy will be served uh, from renewable energy. Now what that means on a competitive basis is you'll see a lot of places right now there are standards in different states that people have, that utilities have a goal of serving 10% uh, of their retail energy by the year 2020, for example. Well, we're clearly ahead of that mark. Uh, these units are pretty unique as it relates to that portion of our portfolio because these are dispatchable renewable units where most of the time we're with renewable and many of the technologies you're somewhat at, at nature's uh, if you will nature's whim whether it's the wind or this the sun you need that in order to make that renewable component of your portfolio work and because we don't have storage that provides kind of that challenge for us as utilities these units, however, obviously are dispatchable, so they can run all of the time or we can actually dispatch them to meet certain periods of load. So that's a unique piece that makes them even more valuable when we talk about what renewables do for us. And certainly, if we look two years from now, uh, when, we, when we have the opportunity to add the additional 100 megawatts of wind that we contracted for this year, that'll bring our renewable portfolio to 23% of our retail, which really is, is a, you know, kind of puts us in a very competitive position with some of the most aggressive utilities in the country with respect to the renewal, amount of renewable in our portfolio, and I think makes us a leader with respect to sustainability in Nebraska as well. And we're doing that all the while we're taking a look and saying, okay, we're still some of the cheapest rates in the country and some of the cheapest rates in the region. Uh, and I think that is really what our mission is, and I think everybody involved in this project helped us beat both that environmental goal as well as our economic goals to make that work. And finally, one other thing, and Dan touched on it, which I think is really neat, and I don't know that everybody recognizes all of the environmental components that come to play that really kind of demonstrate what all of the LES staff does on a routine basis, which is really both balancing that culture of environmental responsibility and economics when you look at all the characteristics of just this site, whether you're talking about issues with respect to wind, this renewable component, a gas combined cycle unit is the most efficient way to use gas, natural gas to serve uh, electric load. Uh, whether you're talking about the fact that we have inlet cooling to get more optimum characteristics, the affluent that Dan mentioned, in order to use water more effectively as a part of that process. So all of those things, I think, are the hallmark of what we do every day. And this, this site and what the staff does here really just typifies that. So thank you for coming. We think this is a great project. Uh, we appreciate you all taking the time to come look. Certainly everyone that worked on this project, thank you very much because it, I think it does just continue to demonstrate what you all do every day to, to make us successful. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Now, if I could have uh, Carla Welding, Jim Dutton, uh, Mr. Mayor, and Kevin, if you could just step up here for a minute. In recognition of this project's success, I'd like to present these uh, replicas of Caterpillar uh, gas engines. Uh, if you are one to count and check things, you'll note that these aren't quite the exact same engines as that are behind us. <laughs> these replicas are 16 cylinder, the actual engines are 20. But with that, I'd like to present this to the mayor. Uh, thank you very much. Well, it does slide out. So yeah. Are you going to give me oh, yeah. a fact sheet so I can explain <laughs> how it works when Absolutely. they ask me? That can be done. All right. This proves engineers never outgrow their toys. <laughs> <laughs> and then on behalf of LES to the Solid Waste Department and then to That's the Terry cool. Bundy Generating Station. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, that 
brings us to the uh, grand finale here. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, LES Board Chair Marilyn McNabb, uh, Mayor Chris Beitler, and Kevin Wales back up here to cut the ribbon, which is a renewable uh, recycled material, I will point out. <laughs> Something that's sustainable. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. 